Football, mock elections, and announcements on today's episode of the Cat's Eye News. and you're watching the Cat's Eye News. Hey everybody, this is Luke, and I'm just here to tell you that this Tuesday after school, German Club's going to be having another meeting in room 245. This meeting is all about board games, so bring your friends and some snacks and come play some German board games with them. All right, hope to see you there. This is Luke signing off. Hey Novi, your culture club is having a meeting on Friday, November 17th at 2.50 p.m. in room 182 to celebrate the UPIC culture and to also celebrate the Native American Heritage Month. Snacks are provided and all are welcome. Have a good day, Novi. If you're interested in joining the animation interest group, on the 14th of November, there will be a meeting in room 181. Make sure to bring your devices. Hi, my name is Camber Smith, and I'm a co-president of Build On here at Novi. Build On is basically a nonprofit organization that works towards increasing education in developing countries, such as like Senegal and Malawi, Guatemala. We fundraise money every year and we try to go build a school like in one of these developing countries. Um, and last year I went to Guatemala and I think it really was a life changing experience for me just because it was like so amazing to be in such a different country and learn about like the life of these villagers. Um, we have a meeting uh, November 13th um, to decide for the people who do want to go on track, where to go. Hey Novi, this week was election week, so we investigated our school's mock election and compared the results to the real election. But first, we took to lunch to learn whether students actually knew anything about election week and whether they even cared in the first place. Hey, uh, what's your favorite part about election day? Um, just seeing the variety of uh, people to choose from. Yeah, no school. No school. No school. Definitely the free food. Free food. <laughs> yeah. Where's the, where's their free food on election day? Well, here at Nova High School, we get candy. What's more important, the mayor or the president? I think, well, both in their own perspectives or in their own. I don't like that answer. You got to give me one or the other. Mm, I don't know, president. <laughs> I think the mayor, because you know, I think it impacts you more locally. Well, you could say that the local government has a higher level of impact on people's day to day lives versus the national government. I'd have to say the mayor. So, who are you choosing this time? Um, that one <laughs> guy, that one Do you know who's on the ballot? <laughs> that one uh, uh, Mr. Uh, yeah, that one guy. Yeah. After all of the votes were cast on Monday, the results of the mock election were revealed. And the next day, we had the results of the real election come in. But before we compare the two, let's hear from the man who organized the whole thing. So we're here with Mr. Brenner, who organizes the mock election. And I'm wondering, what classes actually help you organize it? Yeah, the classes that normally organize it is the AP US government class. Mm -hmm. Do any other classes help out or? Yeah, I have a civics class fourth hour, so we recruited them to work during all lunches. OK, nice. And about how long does it take you to organize everything? Usually it takes two to three class periods. Uh, a week or two in advance, we get started working on it. Okay, all right. Appreciate that, Mr. Brenner. Now we're gonna compare the results of both elections. Novi High School elected Justin Fisher as our mayor with about 57% of the vote, as did the city of Novi in real life, also with about 57% of the vote. However, when it came to city council, the results of both elections differed quite a bit. In the real election, Laura Casey, Matt Hines, and Dave Stout were elected to city council. And Novi High School elected Sujata Rahman, Joe Pettiboyna, and Matt Hines to city council. As for president, that election will be taking place next year, but Novi's opinion polls showed that 59% of students supported Joe Biden, 25% supported Donald Trump, and 11% supported Kanye West. And that's a wrap, Novi. We love democracy, we appreciate your votes, and have a great weekend. video was of the Novi Winter Percussion Group and they want you to join them. Here's a QR code to join and if you're interested in percussion at all, I highly recommend you scan it. It's super fun and the tryouts are no cut, so no matter how much experience you have, you'll get to participate. Alright, well I hope I can convince you to join. This is Luke, signing off. Supervisor of Communications and Community Engagement for the School District. Um, 
I have been in this role for five years, and um, basically my job is to help tell the story of this amazing um, public school district. Football gets a little bit more coverage, but that's not because of football. It's because Friday nights are more than a football game. It's the band, it's the palm team, it's the cheer team. Um, it, even our robotics team is at, at football games. So it's really a community event, and that's why I tend to be at more football games. Unified sports. If, if you haven't been to a unified game yet, um, those, those are amazing. Uh, amazing students and it's so fun to see the joy that they get to have um, by performing in a soccer game or a basketball game. Swimming. Swimming is really tough. Um, yeah, I have not yet uh, taken a great diving photo so the camera lens sometimes fogs up. It's really hot in there. Um, and uh, the, the divers are moving really fast, and uh, the swimmers are moving really fast, and um, yeah, I have not figured that one out yet. I'm t I'll keep trying, though. I like to say that I've had uh, two dream jobs, um, this one and um, before this. Um, I worked with the Detroit Free Press for two decades. Um, I covered the Tigers, Red Wings. I like to say that I, I stopped covering the babies, the prof pres professional athletes, um, to instead uh, start covering the kids. What's up, Nova, and welcome back to Cat Tire Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing Loki Season 2. So as a few of you may know, Loki Season 2 just finished on Thursday at 9 p.m. with the finale. And I think the season itself was just okay, which isn't a bad thing. I It wasn't bad, but it wasn't astonishing. The characters that were introduced or some of the characters from Season 1 that I would never really cared about that came back in Season 2, I still didn't really care about them. Now, uh, Victor Timely was interesting. It, it was really good seeing Jonathan Majors, again, as kind of just a Kang variant. The show was, or the season was okay. But the finale was incredible. The finale was really good. Like, I really enjoyed it. And it was very beautifully written. I love that finale. It definitely was the best finale we've had in a Marvel show. I would give it an 8 out of 10 because of the finale. If if it weren't for the finale, it'd be a 7 out of 10. But I think you all should still check it out because it's still a fun watch. We'll see you later, Nova. <clears throat> Give me uh, Michigan uh, by a lot. By a lot. <laughs> What's up, Novi, and welcome back to this week's edition of College Game Day. We're going to get started here with Ole Miss at Georgia. They played a great game against Missouri last week. Give me the Bulldogs. I agree with Jacob. Georgia's the best team in the country. Give me Georgia. It should be a good game, though. I don't like Georgia. Uh, give me Ole Miss, just because I feel like it. Next game we have is Utah at Washington. This is shaping up to be a great game. I think Washington just has too much firepower. Give me the Huskies. Washington just had a great win against USC. That, they're going to carry that momentum into this one. Give me the Huskies at home. Utah doesn't really have a good quarterback, a good starting quarterback and Washington has a very good starting quarterback. Give me Washington. Next game we have is Tennessee at Missouri. I think Missouri again is a very, very good team and at home versus a mid-Tennessee team and a mid-quarterback in Joe Milton. Give me the Tigers. I think it's just because Missouri is in Missouri. Nobody really talks about them. Nobody really even knows where Missouri is. Give me the Tigers in this one. Missouri played a very good game against Georgia last week. Kept it close. But that being said, Tennessee has Joe Milton who can launch balls into the stratosphere. Give me Tennessee on the road in an upset. Next game we have is Michigan at Penn State. I've been saying all year that I think Michigan should be more worried about Penn State than Ohio State. Give me the Nittany Lions at home against the Wolverines. Michigan might be the best team in college football this year. The door is wide open for any national championship contender. Going into Penn State is going to be really tough. I think the game at noon is going to give Michigan the advantage. Give me Michigan in this one. Michigan is just too talented at every position and just can beat you in too many ways. Give me Michigan. Finally, to wrap it up, we have USC at Oregon. USC just fired their defensive coordinator. Thank God. But Oregon is too tough of a team, so give me the Ducks. Bo Nix just threw for a million yards against Cal last Saturday. He's going to throw for another million next Saturday. Give me Oregon. USC's defense is maybe the worst thing I have ever seen. They have actual minions playing for them. Give me Oregon by a million. That will conclude our episode of College Game Day this week. And let us know if you want to be featured, and we'll see you next week, Novi. What's up, Novi? Thanks for watching today's episode of the Cat's Eye News.